Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Today, I have one of the most exciting videos that you are going to basically think I am the most disgusting person on the world. Exciting, disgusting, it's all good. We're going to brew a beer out of bugs. 100% bugs minus some hops. Yeah, that's because there's a bug you can use instead of hops, but I don't want to use it. So in, instead of malts, we're going to basically just use 100% bugs. You can blend it. You could do some Pilsner and add some bugs and whatever you want to do. And as usual, don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing, and I promise you, you're gonna to wanna to share this video out big time. And it's a little early, so yeah, I'm not having a beer, I'm having a nice coffee here in my uh, Jack Skellington mug or whatever you wanna call it. Got some bugs here. I've been working on this for well over a year, growing the bugs, because to produce the beer from bugs, well, bugs are actually very expensive, even though you don't realize that unless you're breeding reptiles, things like that, then you'll know. I used to raise bugs, or should I say, I used to raise a lot of reptiles, and I chose to basically raise my own feeder insects for my reptiles to keep the cost down, because like I said, just like dogs and cats, the food gets expensive. The other catch is that we're going to have to dry roast all of these. So we don't wanna you know, put them in gooey and nasty, that's just, that's gross, but Everything we take, let's say we take eight pounds of crickets and we dry roast them at 200 Fahrenheit and for about an hour and a half to two hours, well, that's only gonna be about four pounds. Same thing, mealworms, eight pounds is about four pounds. It's about half once you dry roasted it. This is where this comes in right here. I have a container here like this. Oops, not using it for this, but you just take some of this corn crumble, you throw it in there, put a potato or carrot every other day and mealworms, they'll just keep reproducing like rabbits. So it's a lot cheaper than having to buy them. You can just reproduce them yourself. And uh, you know, it's just the way it is. This is a, a pound of crushed dry roasted crickets. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna tell you the ingredients we're going to put in this beer today. I'll give you a little flash to the videos of when I was either raising them or doing something with them. I've taken a few little videos. So that way you can see what the bugs look like and understand You know, if you don't know what that bug looks like for real. Um, I knew well over a year ago I was gonna have to have enough and I know ultimately I'm probably gonna have an excess of bugs. Yeah, I know it. Who says, hey, I have an excess of bugs, but I'll probably donate them to a local reptile shop. I'll probably feed some to the little no lizards out here and I'm in Florida and we get those little green lizards and I like to keep them happy because the happier they are and the more they reproduce, the less bugs come into my house. So, but I'm gonna have plenty of bugs. They're gonna be very happy. Some local reptile shop will be very happy. It'll be the way it is, but so, Getting right into the recipe, we're gonna need four pounds of roasted or dry roasted mealworms. Now, I know what you're thinking, what, mealworms? But actually, mealworms are light, nutty kind of flavor, just like Maris Otter. So, so close to Maris Otter, maybe a little stronger than Maris Otter, but it's pretty close. The problem is, is a thousand mealworms, which is how you normally would buy them, is only 4.7 ounces. And that's $34 for eight pounds. Oh no, $34 per pound, which is eight pounds is $272. So you're starting to see the problem. We're only brewing a two and a half gallon batch, so it's gonna be a small batch, but it's very cost prohibitive. So to produce your own bugs is the only way to do it. It just doesn't make sense any, way, any other way. So I have eight pounds of mealworms, which I'm actually finishing dry roasting right now, and that'll be four pounds, which is part of the recipe I created. The next one, and I'll, like I said, you keep looking at the videos while I'm talking about it. The next one is super worms. You'll need two pounds of super worms, which is about $60. And I know you're thinking, what? That's crazy. But when we dry roast it, that's only a pound of dry roast it for total weight. You don't want them gooey, that's just gross. This is going to give us a toasted bread or biscuit flavor. I know, like, mm, you know, I know what you're thinking and you're starting to see where I'm going here. I've got my biscuit malt, I've got my Maris Otter. It's all gonna come together and it's gonna come together really, really well. Then we have dry roasted crickets, which we need a pound and a half fresh to produce one pound of dry roasted crickets. It'll give us hints of almond. Some people say they get a little bit of popcorn flavor, but I'm not too worried. I haven't actually eaten any, but you know, here you go. And stripe, you can see the wings. You can actually see a little bit of wings and you can see part of the arm, but okay. I'm starting, I get the almond definitely. I'm getting a little bit of the popcorn. Hmm. I could seriously just pop some of this instead of popcorn. It would need a little salt. It definitely needs some salt. It actually tastes pretty good. I was not expecting it to taste that good, but I did a test a while back with a one gallon batch and it all came out good. The next one we're gonna need is eight ounces of dry roasted red runners. Yeah, and you're going, what's a red runner? 
It's kind of a, it's a roach. It's a very little roach and we need a pound and a quarter of these things. And because once we dry roast, I'm only going to get a half pound, but, and you don't want to cook them to death. Well, yeah, I guess technically we are cooking them to death, but you know, actually take them in your freezer, put them in a little rubber, you know, Tupperware type thing, freeze them, then cook them. Otherwise we'll be running all over your oven. You don't want that. Trust me. That's just gross. Let them die in the freezer and then put them on and cook them. You don't want crickets jumping around your oven either. Trust me. Everything, I've, even the mealworms, I put them in the freezer first and then I cook them. But the red runners will give us a nice color to the beer with hints of, yep, you got it, caramel and toffee flavors, just like caramel malts. I planned this whole thing out. I've been working really hard at this. So, um, this one I've been debating on adding, but I finally decided, you know what? Let's just add it in. Not a big deal. These things reproduce faster than rabbits even. Is you're gonna need eight ounces of dry roasted Dubia roaches. Don't worry, they can't fly and they can't climb up. Um, so you put them where rubber made, they're all fine. They look like roly poly bugs until they shed. And then, yeah, they kind of get nasty looking and they look like a giant roach. Well, they are a giant roach, but you want the smaller ones. They have a better flavor and don't use the adults. The, the adults that look like roaches are just overly bitter. You'll need a pound and a quarter. And once you dry roast them, you should get right at about a half a pound to dry roast it. You'll be a roaches. This is gonna add a lot of color and it's gonna give us a roasted flavor. Yes, just like roasted malt. Plus it does have a natural hint of bitter, so something to be aware of. We do also, you know, we're gonna add some hops. We do have a 60, a 30, and a five minute addition. I'm just gonna use a little Cascade, a little Chinook, a little Citra, not a big deal. I am debating between a Pale Ale and a Saison. I'm not really sure which way I'm leaning right now, so I'm kind of keeping the style or the profile right between those two. I'm kind of thinking White Labs 565, you know, that I always joke smells like feet would be perfect and really play nice with the flavors that we're looking for. I haven't used the Dubia Roaches before or the Red Runner, so this is gonna be a little new for me. I've done the mealworms and all that. And like I said, it tastes like Maris Otter. I did mention there is a bug you can use for natural bittering. And if you have four or five of these, it'll be equivalent to about one ounce of a 6% alpha acid. Don't know about the flavors, but it will also give you a hint of cinnamon, which I don't want. It's a stink bug. I'm not a fan of stink bugs. I am not putting them in my beer. I, I gotta draw the line somewhere. I know you're all thinking, man, I drew the line 10 miles back, but no, you gotta draw the line somewhere. You know, I like these. These are actually really good. But yeah, I'm not doing stink bugs. They're just disgusting. I don't even know how to raise them. It's just not happening. I need salt. I really need salt for this. But so basically, so how much would it cost to brew two and a half gallons if we had to buy all these bugs, you know, externally from people who raise them instead of me raising them? It'd be $432 worth of bugs plus shipping? It's crazy. $432 for two and a half gallons of beer made from bugs? That's insane. It makes malts look really cheap. So I've got to crush up the mealworms and get some other stuff ready for the brew. I almost forgot too, the easiest way to crush these things up is just throw them in a, that's how I did the crickets. Throw them in a freezer bag, hit them with a rolling pin, or just smash them with your hands. They break up pretty easy. You don't want to pulverize them into a powder. You just want to get it, you know, like this. And you can see the little wings and the legs in there. That's just perfect. And it does have a hint of popcorn. I think it'll be fine though. So let's get brewing. Let's make some bug beer. Okay, we got some brewing salts. I'll list them down in the directions on what we got. And there go the brewing salts, nice and easy. There was a tiny bit of baking soda. Eh, normally I wouldn't add it until I go to the boil, but I'm not too worried. So a little heavy on the salt side. And we add some gypsum, of course. Okay, we're getting ready to mash in. We're sitting at around 148. The cricket legs and stuff like that will help as far as for a uh, green bed, so you shouldn't need rice hulls or anything like that. And we're gonna go ahead and get mashed in, okay? Also, I went a little high on the sodium, um, trust me. You want to go a little high on the sodium. Okay, I'm going to speed things up because, you know, we got to get moving. Yeah, there you go. Well, that looks really, really nice. Very clear. Like I said, it should get a little darker than that. So we got our bug mash for 75 minutes. Then we'll go to 168 for 10 minutes and do our 60 minute boil. Okay, we're 75 minutes in. I'm going to kick it up to 168. Might be able to see some of the bug guts. Okay, the ring's in. Here we go. Wow. Crazy light. Two and a half gallon batch. Crazy light. Okay, I'm going to kick that up to 212 and go get the sparge water. Okay, it's almost done draining. I'm going to move it over here. Okay, it doesn't smell bad, but it's, it does smell kind of funky. 
looks kind of funky. We'll give it a few more minutes and then I'm gonna move it over there and then we'll get boiling. Okay, I just dumped the hops in. We're running a little behind, sorry. But we got 60 minutes and then another 30, we'll drop the next batch of hops. A little bit more uh, Citra, Chinook, and Cascade, kind of blend it. I'll put the recipe down below, that way you can get it. But I'm putting a little bit in 60, 30, and a five. So we'll be rocking and rolling. There's the Warflock tablet. Didn't even crush it up. It'll be all fine. Dump a fair amount of nutrient in there. Okay, it's that time. Time to chill it all down. We're gonna let that get down so we can pitch some yeast and we'll rock on. Okay, so I decided to not make it a pale ale. I'm gonna go for a Saison. So I got my 565. I figure, you know, feet, bugs, smells great. It'll all be good. But uh, yeah, that should really help with the spices and stuff to, took a little taste. Ooh, definitely sweet and definitely a little on the bitter side, but we shall see. But I know with this stuff, it always eats up so much extra sugar. We'll probably be sitting closer to 7%. So I'm good with that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pitch the 565. Good old feet. Okay, let's see if I can find a marking. And of course I got the one jar that doesn't have the markings for me for measuring. That's gonna be more than enough for a two and a half gallons, just a hair more than two and a half gallons. Cause like I said, I had to water it down just a bit, but okay, we're gonna let it ferment. And we'll go from there and we'll do a taste test and see how it goes. Okay, I know it seems like it's been a few minutes. We brewed the bug beer, we pitched the yeast, let it ferment. It's actually been almost four weeks. I've had to cold crash it, get it going, put it in here, get it carbonated. Now it's time for the taste test. I did have a little sample before it was carbonated and it was actually a little on the sweet side, just a tiny bit, but I think it's gonna be really good. So let's take a taste here. Let's see how it came out. Okay. And there it is. A little lighter than I thought. I thought it would be a little darker, it had a little red, and then it kind of dissipated. It was never really that dark, but you know, I definitely expected. The Dubia roaches were supposed to give it a nice dark hint, but it didn't seem to add any real color to it. But there is your bug beer. And I have it up here on tap, Bug Juice Saison. It's on the tap. No one else has tried it yet. So I don't know if anybody else wants to try it, but hey, I got some bug juice. It smells really nice. It's probably the Saison yeast from White Labs 565, but got a little esters, a little, little something going on there. Oh yeah, it's different, but it's really good. Got a little hint of caramel, definitely get to get the toffee. I taste the popcorn. I mean, it's subtle, but the popcorn's definitely there. But I mean, there you go. 100% bug juice with hops. Are you kidding me? April Fools, definitely appreciate you watching. I hope you got a good laugh out of it, other than maybe going and purging because you're like, oh my God, this guy is so disgusting. Yeah, that is not bug juice. That is regular beer, but I do appreciate you watching. Thank you again. I hope the rest of your year is awesome. Keep smiling. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and definitely share. I do appreciate all of you. Thank you very much. And that's a wrap. You want some bug juice?